The Chicago Bears trading for Khalil Mack was the right move. That's the trash narrative. Let's go. El primero de mayo. <laughs> Hello and welcome in to another edition of Trash Narratives. I am your host, The Sam D. And what I do on this channel is I go through popular sports takes and opinions and I tan down the shreds. I give them that Sam D reality check, whether it's player legacies, dynasties, putting people in the Hall of Fame, or taking people out the Hall of Fame. Nobody is safe. So if you like that type of content, hit the subscribe button, hit the notifications, turn all that stuff on, and let's get to it. So before we get into Khalil Mack and why the Bears should have never traded for him and how that move didn't make any sense, we got to go to the big move that they made before the Mack trade, which is the quarterback. Well, it's finally happened. The Chicago Bears have come to the conclusion that most of us did years ago. They have begun the process of moving on from Mitch Trubisky. Kinda. The draft capital given up for Mitch, which was then followed by the trade for Mack, and like I said, we'll get there. That trade was a mistake. I know, I know, you don't want to hear that. But we'll get there, trust me. The amount of picks they have forfeited in those two deals alone have crippled the franchise and will likely lead to yet another regime change within the next season or two. Trading and inheriting the contract of Nick Foles that pays him 21 million of them things, that doesn't help either. I mean, how else can you explain a journeyman QB coming in to compete with your alleged franchise QB. I mean, you just drafted this kid a few years ago and now you're already bringing in journeyman QBs to compete with your franchise QB? I mean, isn't that an admission of defeat? Isn't it a wrap? Doesn't that mean it's over? I mean, the Bears are really trying to move on from Trubisky, right? No matter what happens with Trubisky or Foles, this is just another Band-Aid for an organization with a decaying wound at the alleged most important position in the game. Despite time and time again the league showing that you can win a title with average QB play, the Bears ignored league history and their own history by still chasing for the elusive franchise quarterback. Something that's evaded them in my lifetime and probably yours too. The Bears are 12 games under 500 under current GM Ryan Pace, and they've only had one winning season. But you remember that one winning season, 2018, right? 12 and 4, magical season. But the offense was amazing, right? They were top 10 in points scored and rushing touchdowns. These are the Bears, right? Like, this is a return to the glory, a return to the monsters of the midway. That defense, that vaunted defense, led by Khalil Mack, we'll get there, led by elite superstar Khalil Mack. They led the league in six different categories. This was a stout defense. But how did that season end up? You know it. Double doink. <laughs> Double doink. They went through all of that. 12 and 4. All these points scored. All these rushing touchdowns. Defense leading the league in six different categories. Just to fall at the crib with the double doink? I mean, you double doink at the crib and Bears fans were despondent. They were a mess. They couldn't believe it. How could a team this good have a kicker that bad? Well, when you draft Kevin White and Leonard Floyd in the first round before we even get the Mazda Mitch, how the hell do you expect him to be able to find a good kicker? But there's a dirty little secret about that 2018-12-4 season. Would you like to know about it? Come on. I know you want to know. All right, so, all right, so boom, check it, right? They had the easiest schedule in the league. Come on, bruh. 12-4, look at that roster. You think that roster was supposed to go 12-4? Who picked them to go 12-4? Show me the expert, the pundit. Show me the fan that said they were going to go 12-4. Look at that roster. I know, I know. The defense was so good, though. Like I said earlier, six different categories that they led the league in. But, I mean, come on. You were gassed off that. You really let Chase Daniel and Miata Mitch getting off 28 combined passing touchdowns. Like, we're saying 28, like, that's a lot. And this is just 2018. This isn't 2008. This isn't 1998 where 28 touchdowns was a significant amount. This is 2018. And we're getting hype off of combined 
28 passing touchdowns? That's why this is the decaying wound. That's exactly why. You're getting hype off of 28 touchdown passes. You're getting hype off top 10 in points scored. That's how low the bar was for that team and that organization heading into 2018. So you got gats. You thought the team was heading in the right direction? Nah. In essence, they just took advantage of beating whoever was in front of them. And they had the fortune of having the third fewest AGL, adjusted games lost due to injury. I mean, in layman's terms, they just didn't have a lot of injuries that year. They didn't lose a lot of players for games due to injury. But before all of that, before the double doink at the crib, before the easiest schedule in the league, before the franchise hampering trade for Khalil Mack, we got to go back to you drafting a quarterback that no one in a right mind would have taken second or third overall. Obviously, the Bears could have drafted Mahomes or Deshaun Watson instead of Mitsubishi Mitch. But let's look at who else they could have drafted. They could have drafted Leonard Fournette, Christian McCaffrey, Jamal Adams, Marshawn Lattimore. All of those would have filled big needs for the Chicago Bears at that point in time. Yet and still... Here they are with Mitsubishi Mitch. So let's finally get into Mac. So you trade two back-to-back -back first round picks for Khalil Mack. And in essence, that's a good trade. On the surface, that's a great trade. You trade for a superstar elite talent. That's a proven commodity. That matters. That's huge. That's a great move. The problem is, is that move was a win now move. You only make that move when you're one piece away or at the most two pieces away from getting a title. What about the Chicago Bears made you think heading into 2018 they were one piece or two pieces away? You don't make a win now move if you haven't hit on the QB. And there was no evidence whatsoever that the Bears actually hit on the QB pick. So that trade only makes sense if you knew you hit on the QB. But there was no evidence, and don't give me that Pro Bowl stuff, because he was like the fifth alternate. Like, don't give me that. Like, they had to pull him off of vacation for him to go replace someone in the Pro Bowl. So it's not like he earned it off of merit. So don't give me that. But what we're talking about is there was no proven evidence that Mini Cooper Mitch was ready, was ready to win anything. The Bears just had to know that they hit on the QB, right? Like, that's the only thing I can like try to explain and shoot them some bail is that they had to assume that they hit on the quarterback. But what in the hell did anyone see at Hallis Hall that made them think that Mini Cooper Mitch was that dude at quarterback? So you risk it all like Melo looking at Riri that one night and trading for Khalil Mack because you thought you had the organization's first franchise QB. And all you got to show for it is a double doink? You only do that kind of a move for a can't miss dude. And nothing about Mercury Mitch's highlights or mixtapes or whatever said can't miss. If anything, that's all he does. Miss receivers, running backs, check downs, screens. That's all he does is miss. Because you traded away picks for what ended up being a below average QB and then doing the same for Mac, you have no collateral to go and fix that first mistake of drafting a below average QB. You have nothing left. You mortgaged everything because you assumed you were going to hit on the QB pick. That's why now you're stuck with the journeyman QBs like Mike Glennon and Nick Foles. They could have had Mahomes or Watson. They would have been set at QB for a decade, right? They also, even if they didn't want to go that route, they could have had Fournette or McCaffrey at running back. They could have had Jamal Adams, Marshawn Lattimore for the secondary, but they did none of that. But yet and still, the Khalil Mack trade was worse for them than even screwing and tricking that off. Because the Khalil Mack trade should have only been made if you knew you hit on the QB move. Which, there was no evidence that they did. Which means you both knew that they didn't hit on that move. So the fact that you went and doubled down in spite of knowing you didn't hit on the QB move was the worst thing that ever happened to the Bears. So it's no fault of Khalil Mack. He didn't do it, but it's the fact that the organization, the GM, thought they hit on the QB pick with no evidence that really put the Chicago Bears in the spot they're in now. So it's not Khalil Mack, it's the Khalil Mack trade that put the Bears where they're at now because they can't erase the mistake 
of trading up one spot and foraging all of that draft collateral to go get Mitsubishi Mitch. So the narrative that the Khalil Mack trade was good for the Chicago Bears, trash narrative. Thank you for checking out this edition of Trash Narratives. I am your host, D. Sam D. And check out some of the other videos I have. I talk about tearing down dynasties, taking people out the Hall of Fame, putting people in the Hall of Fame. And I also like to rewatch classic NBA action. So if you're into that type of content, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, turn on the notifications, and make sure to watch the videos on the end card. I'm the Sam D. Peace.